this video, we're going to be talking about IP addresses. All right, so we got two main types we're going to talk about, IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Um, but first, what is an IP address, right? What even is that? Right, an IP address is a unique address that will identify an advice, a device on either the internet or a network, right? Maybe your local network, for example. Right, the best way to think of it is when we go to google.com, right? Our machines don't understand google.com when we put that in the URL. Uh, they understand numbers, right? And basically, Google has a bunch of servers, and each of those servers has a unique IP address, right? Or a unique identifier. So the best way to think of this is it's similar to a phone number, right? When I call Ryan on my phone, right, if I was calling myself, right, my phone doesn't understand the name Ryan. It doesn't mean anything to it, but it does understand the number 123 222. 2222. Obviously, that's a fake phone number. Don't try to call me, right? That's not my real one. Uh, but here we can see that we have a name and it has a phone number that will allow us to actually interact with it. And computers are the same way, right? The way computers interact with one another is using those IP addresses, right? And we saw it previously when we learned the ping command as well. In the same way as we were just talking about, Google.com actually has an IP address for its servers. Now, once again, this is a pseudo IP. This is not Google's real IP for their servers, right? So just keep in mind that it's very similar to a phone number, right? So purpose of the IP address here is to identify, be a unique identifier for specific machines. Um, and we'll actually learn later on with DNS that the DNS or domain name system is going to be like our phone book, right? It's going to be what actually translates google.com into the IP address itself when we search for that in our URL. Now, to talk about specific IP address types, right, we have IPv4 addresses. These are the most common that you've probably seen, just whether it's randomly or on purpose. Right? You've seen some form of IP sometime in your life. right? Uh, these are represented in the common 1.2.3.4 format. And each octet or section, right, and what I mean by section is each little piece that is separated by a period, can represent any number from 0 to 255. Right, so instead of 1.2.3.4, we could have 0.0.0.0. We could have 255.255.255.255 and anything in between those two ranges, right? This leads us to be able to have 4.2, or more likely 4.3, billion different IP addresses or unique identifiers for devices. Now keep in mind, if you have a device that is connecting to the internet, it needs to have one of these IP addresses so that we can identify it and communicate with it. Now, 4.3 billion sounds like a lot, right? But as we have connected our phones to the internet and our Kindles and our refrigerators, right? And our smart light bulbs and our smart homes and our Alexa Amazons, right? Uh, or Amazon Alexas. This number actually has begun to run out, right? So IPv4, it sounds like a lot, 4.3 billion IPs, but we actually have realized it's not enough. Hence, we have created its successor, right? IPv6 addresses. Now, the cool thing about IPv6, right, or also the cool and confusing thing, is it's represented as eight groups of four hexadecimal characters. So it's going to look completely different to what we're used to with IPv4 addresses, right? Um, each group is represented by 16 bits, right? The groups are separated by colons, and an example is below, right? We see there's actually an example by that arrow, uh, arrow key, um, IPv6 address, right? Keep in mind, it is ugly. Right? To memorize this on your own would be a nightmare, so don't. Right? That is what we actually use the DNS servers for, which we will talk about later on. The cool thing and the real benefit to IPv6 addresses is that there are 340, and 340 trillion combinations. Right? Juxtapose that to 4.3 billion, right? and you can already see the value here. As our need for unique identifiers has expanded, we need a unique identifier that expands as well. And that is what IPv6 has been meant to do. So that is a glimpse into IP addresses. Thank you for joining me in this video, and I will see you all in the next video.